In this video, I will show you how you can configure DocuSign to collect payments as well as save payment methods from your customers at the time of signing the document. Let's get into it. So the way that DocuSign payment works is pretty simple. DocuSign allows you to integrate a payment processor inside of your DocuSign account so that you can then drag and drop a payment field from your list of fields available here. And that payment field is connected to one gateway and so in this case here i've connected it to stripe we can also use authorize.net and you've got more options available more providers there's also paypal and then you've also got some others that are a little bit more popular at the enterprise level so cybersource elevon and zuora but there's a total of six different payment providers that you can integrate directly inside of that little docusign field just in case we haven't met before my name is sofian saudi hi I used to be a DocuSign consultant back in 2019 and I founded SoluSign Consulting in 2020, an agency helping organizations who will deal with lots of paperwork automate their document workflows. For example, if your organization spends lots of time creating documents, there's a huge opportunity for you to automate things and retrieve all the time that you're currently wasting on doing things like manually copy-pasting information from your CRM inside of your document template, or tracking the status of the signature in your Excel spreadsheet somewhere. You can do this directly in the CRM if you integrate it well. You can also automatically store the documents once they have been signed and rename them the way that you like so that once your customer has paid, the document gets stored automatically in your Google Drive or SharePoint or whatever. And if your clients also enter information in form fields, you can extract the information from those form fields to populate any other system that you would normally have to update manually by copy pasting. And all of this, you can learn and do it on yourself by watching those tutorials. But if you don't have the time or capacity or willingness to become DocuSign experts, that's what we're here for. You can schedule a call using the link just down below. And during the call, we will review your current process and strategize the best implementation roadmap based on what you're trying to achieve. But if you're more of a DIY person, I suggest that you download our free DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet because it will help you get started with DocuSign automation on the right foot. But for now, let's go back to how to use DocuSign payments. Now, with DocuSign payments, you can do two main things. The first one is to collect the payment. And so that's going to be using a card, Apple Pay, Google Pay, Bank Transfer, ACH, or SEPA if you live in the EU. Actually, I don't know how to pronounce SEPA in, in English. Now, the way that DocuSign knows how much to collect from your customer, it's either a formula that's going to calculate the total amount that needs to be processed based on user inputs, or it's going to be a fixed price. So it's always going to be the same price for everybody who signs the document, or the user can also enter the amount. And you have to make this decision in your DocuSign template. If you haven't watched my video on how to create DocuSign templates, I highly recommend you watch it first because otherwise, this is going to be way too confusing for you. But if we use this template as the example, here I can just drag and field, and then I can choose fixed amount. So I can say $1,000, or I can say it's going to be signer enters the amount, and then there's going to be a formula. And so the formula is really interesting because it will help you create self-service custom quotes. So in this example that we have here, this car booking request, there's a daily rate attached to each uh, car uh, type. And actually this one should say X5, not X3. I got it wrong. But if they choose the right car make, there's a daily rate associated to that. And on top of that, if they want a black car, it can be $10 extra per day. We also need to know the pickup date and the drop-off date to calculate the number of days so that we can then calculate the actual total amount to be paid. And so we can do all of this inside of our DocuSign formula field to collect the payment on the spot. And so I'm going to show you how to do this in this tutorial, how to create this exact same formula that's going to calculate all of this. But before we get into it, let me just tell you a couple extra things about DocuSign payments. So DocuSign doesn't charge any fees. So whatever payment processor you're going to be integrating with DocuSign, is going to charge you for payment processing fee, but DocuSign doesn't take a processing fee on top of what your payment processor is already charging you. Now, the second thing is that unfortunately, coupon codes, this thing is not available in DocuSign. So you're not going to be able to let your signers enter a promo code. The next thing that's not going to work 
natively inside of DocuSign or subscriptions. So as you've probably noticed here, if I go back to my payment field, I cannot choose a recurring payment. So I'm not able to fetch the recurring subscriptions that you might have in Stripe directly in there. So the workaround for this is to collect the payment method and then set up an integration that's going to automatically create a subscription once the customer has been created. And then the reason you should be using DocuSign Payment, even if you're not processing payment, but you're collecting the payment method is because you have to comply with the PCI standards. I really recommend you do not uh, capture card numbers in text fields inside of DocuSign and only use the DocuSign payment field for that. This is against their terms and conditions, and this is completely non-PCI compliant. And fines can range anywhere from $5,000 to $200,000 for that if you get caught. So I really recommend you do not uh, capture card numbers in text fields inside of DocuSign and only use the DocuSign payment field for that. Now, let me give you a quick demo of how we use it at SolarSign for our own customer onboarding process. And then I'll show you how to configure the template so you can do it for yourself. So we have our CRM, we use Airtable in our case. And then let's just say that we spoke to this specific lead here and they said that they're interested. So we're going to create a, an invoice and let's just say that the project price, this is just a demo again, is $949. So we're gonna click on create proposal and then here it's a draft, right? So we haven't sent it yet. We've got the person's name, we've got the person's email, and it says includes payment. I'm going to click on continue so you can see how the envelope is constructed. And then I can show you in the template how it's built as well. So we have a field here that says the project amount, and then we've pre-populated that value with the number. So 949, and that's a read-only field. This is not visible to anyone. The reason we've placed the number in here is because we want to be able to reference that number inside the DocuSign payment field, which is here. And in this payment field, we are using a formula and we are saying, take the project amount and add 3.4% if you're paying by card. And the way that we know whether people are gonna use card or not is just because we, we offer ACH or wire transfer. Now, as you can see, this field has diagonal lines, it's hashed. And the reason for this is because it's conditional. If clients choose that they want to pay by wire, we're going to hide that field. However, if they do choose credit card or debit card, then in this case, we are forcing them to process payment directly in here. And as you can see, this is set to collect payment and not save payment method. And so then if we click send, the person is going to get it and then the person is gonna to have to sign the agreement. Um, I'm actually going to change the email so that you can see exactly what it looks like. And I'm also going to change the payment amount so that I don't have to pay $949 for the purpose of this demo. And I'm going to change this to a one. And there you go, I'm now sending it. So I'm technically sending these documents to this person, but I'm using my email address. I'm gonna click next and send. Now I will receive the envelope to sign and obviously pay. Let me show you how this works. Here's the document. We don't really need to read anything. Really, this is just our proposal and I haven't added any product in there anyways. How would you like to pay? Credit card. Do you have the card ready to make the payment now? If I select yes, then I will be prompted to sign the agreement and then pay. So I'm just going to sign acting as this lovely candle customer and now I'm going to click on finish and as soon as I do that then I'm being asked to pay one dollar and three cents because we just added the surcharge for the card now if the client had chosen wire they would just see the wire instructions and then the invoice will be generated automatically but that's topic for another day so let's go with yes and then I'm going to finish and I'm going to add my card the payment has been completed so I've just got a receipt from Stripe I'm saying that the customer has paid $1.03 and I also get another notification letting me know that a new customer was created in Stripe. And so that's the thing that I'm going to show you next is how this customer gets created inside of Stripe. If I go to my transactions, then I can see that customer in here and I can see my $1.03. And so from here, 
I can either do a refund or I can create a subscription, which is the next point that I wanted to talk about because DocuSign does not allow you to set up subscriptions. You can do this using Zapier if you want. We can create an automation that sets up a recurring subscription using a product that you've pre-configured inside of Stripe. But the other alternative is to use something like JotForm. So for example, for this specific client here, we built the form inside of JotForm and not in DocuSign because they wanted the ability to create recurring subscriptions. And so DocuSign wasn't giving this ability. They didn't want to create a complex integration. So with JotForm, you're able to add a payment widget and in your payment widget, you can pull the actual subscriptions from your Stripe account. And then you can also even apply coupon codes. And so that's going to fetch the list of coupon codes. And then when the customer enters the coupon, the, the, the discount will be applied. So that's pretty cool. In case you don't want to use DocuSign and you've only got one person who needs to sign, JotForm is great. But if you have other people who need to sign the agreement, then that's not the software for you. You will have to use DocuSign. Now, let me show you how you need to configure the templates so that you really understand how this works. The first thing you'll want to do is to go to your admin uh, tab at the top, click on add payment gateway, and then here you just choose the payment processor you want to uh, connect to DocuSign. You'll be prompted to add your username and password. That's it. There is nothing else to do. Once you've done that, then you can go inside of your template and you can then create a payment item. The reason I'm using this specific template here is because this current template is just calculating the cost of the booking, but it doesn't prompt the customer to actually pay. So what we're going to do is we're going to transform these formula fields here, which are already calculating the cost and just turn them into payment fields so that we don't have to think about the formulas because the formulas already exist. I have two formula fields, as you can see, we have one for the white uh, car and one calculation if they choose black. So we want to have two payment fields as well. So let's just call this field here payment white so that we know what we're doing. And this one we'll call it payment black. And now we can set up the formula. So instead of creating our formula from scratch by clicking here, clicking setup and then retype the whole thing, because here there's a lot of things that we need to take into account. I'm simply going to copy my formula from here, which already exists and paste it inside of my payment tag. But typically you would normally need to click on setup and then you would have to use these uh, fields here to add, multiply, divide, do whatever you want. If you want to learn how to create DocuSign formulas, then I really recommend you watch my tutorial on how to create DocuSign formulas because this is not the purpose of this video. So here I'm simply going to paste my formula and I'm going to click on save. I'm going to paste this one to the black. And I'm going to say formula as well. Set up, paste my formula. And now the last thing to do is to make each of those payment fields conditional to the color. So I'm going to go to my trigger, say that if the car is black, then do this one. And then if the car is white, then show me this one. I'm not going to remove those fields for now because I do want to make sure that the calculation amount is still the same. Super important to label your names correctly, label your fields correctly. I'm going to save and close. And then we're going to create a power form. Power forms, again, it's another discussion. So the topic power forms allow you to create self-service forms that you can embed on your website or share using a simple link. And then it's the signer who will provide their name and email and pay in this case. So now we've got the URL for our power form. I'm going to open that URL and we're going to calculate the amounts. And we're going to test that the actual calculations work the way they, they should be working. Now, side note, if you want to use a web form, I think it's not great because you can't have formula fields shown in the web form experience. You can have formula fields after the web form. So just in case you don't know what the web form is, Web form is another kind of self-service form. You have power forms and web forms. So web forms look really nice and slick because they just show you the field and not the text of the document, but formulas don't work in web forms. So that's something to consider. And again, the power form, I've done a tutorial on that. So feel free to go and check this out if that's something of interest. I'm now choosing the car make. It's an X3, X3. I want it white. And then the pickup date is gonna be tomorrow and it's going to be back on that day. And as you can see, my formula fields and payment field all working fine. 
because I have the same amount in both places. Now, I'm obviously not going to pay the $420 for the purpose of this demo, but I just wanted to show you how your customers can customize and create the quote for themselves without you being involved. And if you need help with any of this, creating your all the form or docs and integrations or templates or any document workflow automated uh, request, and you can schedule a call using the link just down below. During the call, we'll review your process and provide you with the best implementation roadmap for your unique needs. I will see you in the next video. And until then, happy signing. Ciao.